My name is Mike Fiaschetti, commanding officer of the Alien Squad, New York City Police Department. Your host for this episode of Gangbusters. It's tough to hide a crime, even when you use something like this. In just a moment, I'll tell you how this mask was used by the most vicious, colorful, and cunning gang of criminals to operate in this country in the past two decades. The principals in the gang came from Tripoli, the master criminal Marco, whose name struck fear not only to the people, but to the police. In Paris, they knew the second, Pierre of Paris, an international jewel thief who posed as a guide in the evening. <laughs> spawned the third, its infamous and most cunning, the Henri Volat. While being chased by the police, Volat saw an artist. His knife flashed, the artist was dead. And in a matter of seconds, Volat, disguised as the artist, watched the police and the crowd running past. Volat was captured and sentenced to Devil's Island which held only the worst dregs of the French underworld. It's located north of the mouth of the Amazon River and can be walked around in 40 minutes. Tides around it make escape impossible. Devil's Island was chosen as a place for a living death. It's 300 miles north of the equator. Dense jungle and mangrove swamps with a climate inviting tropical diseases. Escape meant swimming those impossible tides through poisonous fish and if the escaper ever reached the mainland, then 300 miles of impregnable jungle to get out of French territory. Balak tried it, got to the riverbank with his cunning, ingenious scheme. For five days and nights, Balak hid in the same spot, underwater and breathing through a hollow reed by day and emerging at night to store up strength. When the search moved away from the area, he made his way across the infested waters and through 300 miles of steaming jungle. New York, Washington Square, the mansion of dignified Albert Shattuck, the multimillionaire. Monsieur? Mrs. Shattuck and I are very happy that you're going to be with us, Henry. Thank you, sir. We hope you'll like it here, but we feel that it is only fair to you to uh, let you know what we are like. <clears throat> Mother? Henry, Mr. Shattuck is a very precise man. He wants his breakfast at exactly the same hour every day. And he does not want the menu varied. If he tells you something, it is exactly so. You can swear by it. Your recommendations that I've been reading are quite glowing. And we trust that you will be as happy here as in your native France. Thank you, sir. Madame? You must find him. It's very important. Oh, won't you please try again? Something terrible has happened. Yeah. Russell. What's the matter? The house has been ransacked, and a lot of my jewels are gone. And so is Henry. Well, never mind the jewels. Thank heaven, Jose. And did you call the insurance company? Less than four blocks from the Shattuck Mansion in a dingy cellar dive in Greenwich Village, Pierre, the famous jewel thief, who had escaped to the States from Paris, was listening to Borat, Shattuck's ex-butler. The Shattuck Mansion is like an art museum. Staffordshire faces. Not a picture on the wall that isn't an original. And the priceless Revere candlesticks. How these three international criminals ever got together, we'll never know. Or how Henri Borat had ever escaped from Devil's Island, but he had. I saw these things when I was their butler. Over a million dollars in silver and ornaments. And the international murderer, Marco, with his uncanny strategy. The wine cellar, is it as uh, extraordinary too? I was in the wine vault once, like an underground tomb. This opportunity is worth even the three of us. Underground tomb. Huh? The Shattucks were very nice people. I would prefer they be left alive. That might be possible. Sunday, 3.30 p.m. Outside, the Sunday crowds were strolling up Fifth Avenue. 
Two of Shattuck's servants had been let off early to go to the Presbyterian church just around the corner. Recognize me, Mr. Shatter. I spoke before I thought. Start for the cellar. All of you. That wine vault is airtight. Why, these people couldn't live in there an hour. It would be like burying them alive. If you please, start now. I'm very impatient. Do as they say, they're dangerous. Quickly! my word of honor. We will make no noise nor attempt to escape, but we'll remain quietly inside for an hour, providing you leave the door open. We will accept your word. We will leave the door a little open. Not too much. <laughs> This was a matter of life and death to each one of us. It was my fault for believing them. But if each of us remain calm... Oh, we'll never get out of here. Never! If each does his part, we have a chance. Now, see if you can't find a comfortable place and sit down. Our, our main problem is oxygen. Now, lie on the floor and don't move around and don't breathe too deeply. You have a plan? Yes, but let's not waste precious air discussing it. I, I have a penknife. I'm going to see if I can't unfasten these screws that hold the panel. Ten cent piece in my pocket. Perhaps I can unscrew them with that. were on the spot. It was the most daring and the biggest haul taken in 10 years. 
The first break came when the proprietress of an antique shop recognized a chalice offered for sale as being from the Shattuck collection. She agreed to buy it and asked the seller to return at 3 p.m. for his money. That was Pierre's last mistake. Out of the thousands of men in our department, the case was tossed in my lap. The big brass probably expected me to call out a hundred detectives, scour the neighborhood for witnesses, and round up scores of unsavory and questionable characters. But instead, I invited Ed, a young rookie I was training, to have lunch with me. Then we went to the precinct where they were holding Pierre. Are you waiting for them to walk in and give themselves up? Something like that. I'm not kidding. What's this going to get you? Sooner or later, somebody's going to come in here and contact Pierre, if only to tell him to keep clamming. That may be today, tomorrow, or next week. What about her? Ah, oh, not a chance. It's real class. Quality clothes, good taste, expensive simplicity. Besides, she walks like Park Avenue, not like a runway. How can you spot it so soon? Well, it's part of my business. Besides, what would a young kid like that have in common with a goon like Pierre? Baby, can I help you? Yes. Go back to where you came from and let me go about my business. You approached your objective with all the finesse of a ten-ton truck. I suppose you could do it better. If I was interested. But I'm not. I want to see Pierre. The man implicated in the Shatter case. Okay, wise guy. Now, are you interested? Yeah, very much. Flash the desk not to let her in. Keep her waiting. Get her frustrated and upset. When she leaves, tail her. When she likes, call me. Where will you be? Me? I'll be right here, catching up on the sports page. I'm calling from a restaurant at 22 Broadway. She's here, too. Is she eating alone? Yeah. I'm on my way. And Ed, from now on, I'm Jimmy DiMaggio, a big wheel from the Seventh Ward. DiMaggio, eh? I sure wish I could stick around and watch this. You know, I got a hunch DiMaggio from the Seventh. I'll never get the first. I spotted her and was glad Ed wasn't around to see me try to pick up a kid young enough to be my daughter. I cooked up a line that I felt might hold water. I sucked in my stomach, squared my shoulders, and moved in. I uh, saw you this afternoon at the tombs. Beg your pardon. I heard them turn you down, started to throw my weight around. Figured you might resent my help, so I kept my mouth shut. Are you an official? <laughs> Not me. No, I just dropped in to say a good word for a friend of mine. They got locked up. You see, it's, uh, it's my business to know the right people. A big shot. How big and how much weight? You know. You name it. Well, huh? you know what I went there for. Can you get me a pass? Duck soup. Just one hitch. I only do favors for friends. Get me a pass to see Pierre. And then we'll talk about friendship. I didn't hear the name of the guy. What's he in for? Mistaken identity. Someone gave him a vase to sell. It had been stolen, and the police arrested him. And uh, you think he's innocent? Mm-hmm. Who says he isn't? Mr. and Mrs. Shattuck. Shattuck? The banker? Maybe you sure picked the hot ones. <laughs> What's the matter with the big wheel? Did you suddenly go flat? No. Like I said, I can swing it. But it'll take a little time to bring that much influence in the line. But you'll do it? For me? While you're waiting, you, uh, you want to send him any message? Well, do you think you could get it to him? Try me and see. All right. I followed my plan of action. In the taxi which drove us to her home, I flirted with her and built the impression that I was going for her in a big way. The note was a masterpiece of innocence or complicity. I couldn't tell which. 
It read, Dear Pierre, all your friends say you are innocent and are ready to help you in every way. I will contact you soon. Signed, Marie. The fact that her note had been smuggled in and Pierre smuggled out in a matter of hours established me in the girl's confidence. But I still didn't know just where she fitted into the picture. We made the rounds, Broadway show, back to her favorite club. I wanted to strengthen my positions and get the answers to a few questions. Marie, I'd do anything for you. I wish you could fix it for me to see Pierre. Pierre, I'm working on it. Oh. Jimmy, you're jealous. Skip it. I said I'd get you in and I will. Ed, this is Jimmy DiMaggio. I want a favor. Anything you say, Jimmy boy. I want you to fix it for a friend of mine to see that Pierre in the morning. Well, uh, it's pretty hot. Not half as hot as you'll be if I turn on the heat. How will I know this friend? When the uh, prettiest thing that ever lived walks in and says, my name is Marie, send her in. Yes. And Ed, in case she doesn't get in. Don't worry, she will. I'll see to it. Thank you. I didn't think you could do it. Marie, I'm falling for you. Just don't ever try to cross me. Are you in charge here? Yes, miss. I, I've been expecting you. Well, I want to see... It's all been arranged. When Jimmy DiMaggio passes the word, things happen. Any trouble? None. It's wonderful how you arranged it, Jimmy. Now I got a real surprise for you, baby. Surprise? But this is the official police report on him. How'd you get it? Easy. Right connections. Who's this captain of detectives? Fia... Fiasetti, who signed it? Fiaschetti, uh... Oh. Well, some dumb cop they've assigned to get the rest of the gang. Could you handle him? I think so. Give me your turn. <laughs> her story was new to her, but a worn-out record to me. Marie, good home, good family, meets Marco. Wrong guy. I knew the script even before she filled in the details. She wanted out, but she was in too deep. Marco, the murderer of Tripoli, saw to that. This is big stuff, Marie. It'll take a lot of money to fix it. That outfit will have to raise 20 grand to bribe the district attorney's office. Think they can do it? Oh, I'm sure they... I'm sure they can. I think I can get it tomorrow. Oh, Jimmy, you're wonderful. I just left her. Get over to her apartment and keep it under surveillance. If anything happens, call me. If not, I'll meet you there at 7 in the morning. You're playing it too close to the cuff, Fiaschetti. See? Why'd she use the back way? Let's go. He can fix it. Fix the whole thing for $20,000. Who told you? He did. Jimmy DiMaggio. I told you how much he's done. Why, he's got influence everywhere. You are stupid. Well, if you're so smart, why didn't you contact Pierre? Marco, I told you this girl would get us in trouble. We're not in trouble. But after all, 20000 is a lot of money. Well, I think uh, we'd better discuss this. Hello. Outside, I had to fight a battle with indecision. If I took the time to call in the local police, my suspects might escape. But we were in New Jersey, and I had no authority to make an arrest. They're all 
these years, you have to pick one like her. It was a mistake. It can be remedied. If she was followed, I said it could be remedied. because I thought you had made a mistake, but Marco had convinced me I am wrong. After all, $20,000 is so little to spend to protect half a million dollars. You have succeeded where we would have failed. To success in your very great duty. Who are you? Jimmy DiMaggio. You came to hijack us. You're both wrong. I'm Mike Fiaschetti. Fiaschetti? You're a New York cop. And this is New Jersey. You have no authority here. That's right, Chief. We demand to see a lawyer. All right. We'll take you to see your lawyer. Find him a lawyer. And if you get on the wrong road, you might just happen to find yourself back in New York State. If I didn't have this gun in my hand, Chief, I'd salute you. Mike. Mr. Fiaschetti, to you. You ought to be turned over your mother's apron and whacked with a hairbrush. If you'd had more of that in your early life, you wouldn't be mixed up in a mess like this. You come from a good family. I looked you up. But you've always been a spoiled, selfish, thrill-seeking little brat. If I do my duty, this will give you the final shove that'll send you clear to the bottom. I'm sorry, Mr. Fiaschetti. I made an awful mess of things. I'm sorry for you and all the care of the kids like you. I'm a lot more sorry for that wonderful old couple I met. Who told me all about their wonderful daughter, who had such a fine career as an art salesman. How many years will they? None. Because I'm going to stick my neck out and give you an unofficial parole to myself. You're going home to live, and you're going to live on a schedule that'll make a real woman out of you. A woman like your mother and mine. A woman that this country needs. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Fiaschetti. And if you ever so much as even look at anybody on the shady side of the law, I'll mop up the floor with you. Is that clear? <laughs> Mr. Fiaschetti, I think you're wonderful. All three of the alien criminals received 40-year sentences at hard labor, in spite of the claim of France that they should be returned and be beheaded on the guillotine. Marie went home, told her folks the whole story, and is now well on her way to becoming the woman she was intended to be. Next week, we have an entirely different case for you. On behalf of the police, we invite you to join us. Gangbusters, created by Phillips H. Lord. you have heard tonight was based upon police records, court records, and personal interviews. 